And people quote that, but they forget that, uh, you know, Paul was in the prison when he wrote that. So in the midst of pain and suffering, he still is telling to rejoice, not just like that. So, the verse uh, 5, uh, sorry, verse 4, chapter 37, verse 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. In the few minutes that we have, I just want to give you a little more explanation of this so that we can, because this verse has been a big part of my journey from my Bible college days all the way to now where I'm at. You know, the verse, this whole Psalm 37 was, uh, was written by David, of course, and he wrote this with the context where this age-old question was, is why do righteous people suffer and wicked people prosper. Now, as I was traveling in few of the roads, you know, the driver was telling, you know, this is a fancy house, this one. And the constant words that were coming is, you know, this is all you see, how much of corrupt money has given such beautiful houses. And here are common people with no proper facilities. These were the common things that were going on in the last three days that people were telling. And then you suddenly look at how come people having corrupt money have such palatial houses, beautiful roads, and whereas people who are trying to live a godly life don't have the same kind of a facility. And sometimes we become envious of the people who have done wrong but yet been successful. Now this is the kind of the situation which David is facing. And that is when he writes this psalm. He is not writing the psalm at the peak of his success, but at the point where he's asking this question: why do righteous people suffer and wicked people prosper? In that context, he writes, delight yourself in the law, and he will fulfill, he will give you the desires of your heart. And first thing, you know, you must have a desire in order for God to fulfill. And today, when I talk to a lot of Bible college students, they don't have a desire, they don't have a plan, they don't have a vision. I ask them, why do you want to study in a Bible college? Uh, somebody told me I should go. Or they'll say, well, I did not get seat anywhere else, so I came to the Bible college. Or I want to change my life, that's why I came to a Bible college. I don't know what is your condition, but dear friends, just being in a Bible college is not enough if you don't have a vision, if you don't have a goal. Otherwise, you know, you are occupying a seat which somebody else could have sat in your seat and could have made the best use of the opportunity. Always remember, whenever you are sitting on a seat, that seat could have been occupied by somebody else. It is like this. A friend of mine's father was in his dying bed in Pune. And he almost came to the point that doctors could not do anything else. But these friends of mine have a lot of money. So they kept the father in the hospital on a ventilator. And the doctor said, you know what? You're just prolonging the death of this person. And, and it is better for you to take this person home. And my friend said, Dr. Money is not a problem. You can keep him in the hospital. Please give him the best treatment. And you know what the doctor said? The doctor said, it's not about the money. Because your father is occupying a particular bed, remember that there is another patient who is going out without the opportunity to be treated. Because the bed is occupied. It is like this, your seat, your opportunity for this time is precious. If you don't take your life seriously, all that your, your, your lecturers are investing into your life, and if you're not going to use that for your future, you're wasted not only your opportunity, your time, but you're wasted somebody else's opportunity to be here and to be equipped. 
So do you have a desire? Do you have a dream? What is it that God wants to do? And in order for you to know what is God's desire, you need to see God. So Psalmist says that delight yourself in the Lord. What does it mean to be delighted? You know, delight, the, the Hebrew word, the root word for this delight means to take pleasure, to seek happiness. That is what the word delight means, is to seek your pleasure, to seek your happiness. In the world we live in, it has so many temptations, so many temptations, and we start to take pleasure in so many things. In spite of being in a Bible college, you can still be distracted with the pleasures of this world. But if you have the desire that God wants for you, you will not fall into the temptations of this world. So the meaning of the word delight means is to take pleasure. So here the psalmist says, delight yourself in the Lord means to take your pleasure, your happiness in who God is, in his power, in his character, in his potential, in his promises, in all these factors, you take your greatest pleasure, not from the world, not not from the way how people play their music. You know, there are a you know, lot of them in Nagaland. You all start in the church. Every famous artist, every famous designer, you take anyone, they all have a starting point in the church. But they've gone away from the church now. The more famous they are, they are less, less rooted in the word of God. But you see, the starting point has been in the church. And you all are going to become ministers of the gospel one day. Which means you will be responsible for all these people who are going to start their journey in the church. And you have to equip them and nurture them there so that when they walk the path on this earth, they will continue to be rooted in the word of God. So delight yourself is take your pleasure in who God is, not in the world. Now, I'm a musician, and I can tell you today wholeheartedly that I've never had to compromise to the world standard for my musical journey. I've never had to sell myself to play for Bollywood or Hollywood or any other wood in this world. And I could still be a gospel Christian musician and be successful in this life. You know, for us, we, we run a cafe called Chai 316. If you ever come to Bangalore, come and visit us. It's a brilliant, amazing place. State of the art facility, actually. And you, even you can find it on social media. And we, 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 you know, we constantly we keep on recruiting staffs. Staffs who want to come and engage in counseling with college students. These are intellectual students. So when you sit down and talk, you know, they ask you tough questions. So when, whenever I ask, and we also have music as a very key integral part of our ministry. So there are people, I would ask them, can you send me some of your songs? I want to listen. These are theological students. And then they'll say, oh brother, I don't have any gospel songs. I said, what kind of songs here? Well, I have love songs, I have romantic songs, I have other songs. I said, you are a theological student. You worship God, God has given you the gift. And what, what are you doing with the songs of this world? And then they say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that this is wrong. No, you cannot serve two masters at the same time. You cannot serve the world and you cannot serve God at the same time. So friends, make sure that you either are hot or you are cold. You cannot be lukewarm. And I'm not here to condemn you, but I'm telling you the truth from whatever I've seen and heard. But if a broken person, I'm a high school dropout. You know, when I gave my life to Jesus at 16, I was completely messed up. I was broken. I had no plans, no desires. I have six months to live medically. And at 16 is when I gave my life to Jesus. At 17, I joined the Bible college. And I asked God, God, what do you want to do with my life? I have nothing. I have no education, no health, no talents. 
Imagine, I learned to play the guitar only at the age of 19 in the Bible College. But I started off my journey with this desire, asking God. And you know, when you take your pleasure in who God is, when He becomes everything for you, you know, you start to dream His dreams for your life. It's like, you know, somebody asked my wife recently, you know, so what is your role? She says, well, wherever my husband goes, I will follow. Now that, that is exactly how our desire should be with God. If somebody asks, what is your dreams and desires? We'll say, well, whatever the Lord has led me, I want to follow the path that he has created and designed for me. I mean, he's a good father. He has good gifts. He has amazing plans. Not to harm us, but to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future, according to Jeremiah 29, 11. So if this is who God is for us, why don't we surrender our desires, our will, into his hands and align ourselves to him? Where your desires are parallel to God's desires. Your dreams and your goals are in harmony to God's dreams and desires. And that's how I became a musician. When I went back and I asked Jesus, what do you want me to do? He said, Benny, I've created you so that you can carry my message through music. And then he said, Benny, I want you to travel to every country in the world. He said, I will provide for you. Many times, friends, people say, money is the problem, Benny. That's why I have to do this, this. Why is money such an uh, important decision maker when the Bible says that my God shall supply all my wants, all my needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. And somebody even put a little more emphasis by saying, the Lord is my shepherd, what more shall I want? When God is everything, why do you give importance to money to compromise to your dreams and your visions. With nothing, God took me to every country in the world. With nothing, God told me to build Chai 316, a 400 seater cafe. And by God's grace, we were able to do that. The building was five crores and God provided everything. How I could achieve this? People come and ask, how could you achieve this? Last week I was speaking at Indian Institute of Technology. They're asking, how could you achieve traveling to every country in the world? How did you do this? And I would say that, you know why? Right? Because this is not my desire. It is God's desire. And I just became a steward, a vessel to carry his vision in my life. And if God can do that, he can do that with you too. And I challenge you, dear friends, do not take your time, your talent, and your life lightly. Remember, your seat is a valuable seat. Your time is a valuable opportunity. If you miss it, there are others who have missed out and wish that they could have been there. But God in his sovereign plan has called you to be here for a time like this, to be equipped so that you can carry the gospel out to others and there will be transformation. And, and, and you know, he can do wonders. And I'm just a testimony. And as I close, remember to delight, to seek your pleasure, to seek your happiness in God. And he will fulfill the desires. He will fulfill the desires of your heart. You know, uh, I, I never could write a book because I don't have that knowledge and expertise. And I, I have a very short attention span. And from 2001, I've been trying to write, and every time I kept failing, every time I would get a new book to start, I could not. But when it was God's time, you know, during COVID time, is when God suddenly put that desire, that, that, that uh, inspiration, the knowledge, the memory, and I was able to write my first book called Unthinkable. And I thought, who's going to buy this book? Because I'm just an ordinary guy with my book. But I'm amazed, in one year, 17,000 copies have gone. And this is, this is the work of the Lord, this is not mine. And even, uh, I, I've left a copy, uh, uh, a box of my books, which will be available. There's no price, you decide the price. Whatever you feel led by God. But this is 32 stories from 32 countries. It's called Unthinkable. If that is what Jesus can do, 
I believe he has a plan for each and every one, a tailor-made plan. But learn to surrender your life and your dreams into his hands and ask God, God, what is your desire? And then learn to delight, take pleasure in God's dream for your life. And I challenge you, you will be a powerful testimony, just like how my wife and I said, we have been to the nations. Shall we close our eyes, please? Loving Father, I want to thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for TTC, for the pillar that this college stands, and for the numerous number of students who have graduated from here and have done wonders for your kingdom, have become vessels for carrying your truth into the nation. I commit each and every one seated here, and may they not take their life lightly. May they be inspired by your word. May they learn to take pleasure from you. And as they seek your will and your guidance, I pray that you speak into their lives, that they will truly be your salt and light wherever you will take them. Bless them, Lord Jesus, and make them a blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.